The first steps are easiest with the car still resting on its wheels. Open the bonnet, remove the cap from the brake fluid reservoir and take out about two thirds of the brake fluid. This stops the brake fluid overflowing later when the brake caliber piston is pushed back into its cylinder to make room for the new pads. Dispose of this old brake fluid properly. You'll be using new fluid when you refill the reservoir, so make sure you get the right type for your vehicle. This is the point where you now need to apply the handbrake, loosen the wheel nuts, raise the car, support it on axle stands and remove the wheel. Lever the caliper outwards a little bit to create clearance between the pads and the disc. Count to hold the guide pins with an open-ended spanner and then slacken and remove the upper guide pin bolt. Although it is a common requirement to replace the guide pin bolts, it is not universal. Several manufacturers do not specify new bolts. This information will be in the Haynes manual for your car. Pull the caliper and pads off the mounting bracket and then hang it with a piece of wire. Don't allow the caliper to hang by the brake hose because it's not designed to take the weight. Remove the inner brake pad. Now remove the outer brake pad. You may need to prise it out carefully with a screwdriver to do so. Measure the amount of material remaining on the pad. If it's less than two millimeters, replace all of the pads on both front wheels. Pull the two caliper guide pins out of their sleeves and clean them, then lubricate them with high temperature brake grease. Replace any of them that are damaged and then install the guide pins back into the mounting bracket in the correct direction. Clean the caliper and mounting bracket with brake cleaner remove the upper and lower shims before cleaning the area. Use a piston retraction tool to push the piston back into the body and refit the upper and lower shims to the mounting bracket. Apply anti-squeal compound to the backing plates of the new pads. Sounds like a minor thing, but you will be glad of it later. Now install the new inner and outer pads in the correct direction. With that done, it's time to reassemble the brakes. Install the caliper onto the mounting bracket and tighten the caliper guide pins to the specified torque setting. You'll need to pump the brakes several times to seat the pads against the disc. Now repeat this procedure on the front brake pads on the other side of the vehicle. Remember, you always replace both sets of front brake pads at the same time, never individually. When that's done, you can refit the wheels and the nuts, then lower the car to the ground and tighten the nuts to the correct specs. Your owner's manual may specify a proper torque setting for this. Don't forget to check the brake fluid level in the master cylinder reservoir and add new brake fluid if needed until the fluid reaches the maximum mark in the reservoir. Finally, be sure to check the operation of the brakes before driving the vehicle in traffic. Try to avoid heavy brake applications until the brakes have been applied lightly several times just to make sure that the new pads are properly seated.